Join us in this endeavor once again, Father, as we walk through the Bible and let Jesus, who is the word, walk through our minds, our hearts, our lives and organizing and rearranging things that are out of place and put us back into kingdom alignment for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Bless you. Good to see you tonight. Let's walk through the Bible. Again, thank God for those of you that do purchase the lesson plan. Uh, it goes to the building fund. It goes to the building fund. Um, and for those of you that don't, God bless you. Open your Bible to Genesis chapter 9. And uh, we're going to go uh, through the scriptures, which is what uh, Walk Through the Bible is about. We go through the scriptures. We teach, excuse me, and we expound on the scriptures. And tonight we have one single verse that we're going to expound on and walk through. And that's found in Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. And uh, uh, I'm going to read that out loud. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. Again, every moving or every living thing, uh, every creature rather, that liveth shall be your meat. As I have given every green herb, I have given you all things. Before the flood, this is important, before the flood, before the flood, man's diet, according to God and scripture, was just seed-bearing plants and trees, not meat. Just seed-bearing plants, or man was just to eat a vegetarian diet. Now, let me say this right off the top. I'm not here to, to, to be pro-con, vegetarian, or, or tell your children to eat their vegetables. This is not what this is about tonight. Amen. So, so let's, let's just get that out of the way right, right away. So and here's a proof text. Genesis 129, King James. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. That's, that's a plant, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, again, that's, that's, that's greenery, in which is the fruit tree yielding seed. To you it is for meat. This was before the flood. Okay, now after the flood, God says man can eat meat and, and, and other living things that we know people do eat. All right? So God here in his providence, in his wisdom, establishes man's diet. It's interesting. He establishes man's diet after the flood. Now, doing so suggests several things to me, at least two, that there are some plants and animals that we should neither occasionally eat or routinely eat. I'll let you, let the Holy Ghost help you with whatever that may be. Uh, but, but for some reason here, it, it, after the flood, God talking to Noah, uh, uh, God tells man he can eat meat. Now some say there's a reason that God has allowed man to eat meat after the flood. And some scholars and some, some sages say that God allowed man to eat uh, meat after the flood because the earth had changed. The earth had changed. It had, it had changed. It had shifted in orbit and other dynamics began to happen. But we're going to talk about what we know changed about the earth for sure. So what changed after the earth, uh, after the flood rather, or as a result of the flood? Sin. Somebody say Sin. Come on, don't be afraid to say it. Say sin. sin. Can't be afraid to say sin. Can't be afraid to say it. All right. So, so after sin entered into the world, the world was never the same. Before sin entered into the world, the world was a completely different place where Adam and Eve lived. It was a completely different place. But as after sin entered into the world, the world was changed forever. Now, it's interesting to note uh, that, that now that Adam, excuse me, that Noah, only Noah and his family are alive, they're the only people alive on the planet. So there are no sinners on the planet because we know Noah and his family were righteous. But sin has still impacted or still in the earth. Why? Because in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says God cursed the ground or he cursed the earth. So the earth is different now because sin is in it and God cursed the earth. Follow me now. Even though there are no sinful people on the planet at that time, only Noah and his family, the earth was still different because of sin, because God cursed the earth 
in Genesis 3, 17. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Now, let me insert this here real rapidly, real quickly for our hyper grace people. Again, we know that the blood of Jesus Christ has made us new. We are redeemed people. Tell somebody, I'm brand new because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're, we're redeemed. We are redeemed. We are bl- brand new men that live on an unredeemed earth. Write that down if you don't have the notes. We are redeemed people living on an unredeemed earth. We are new creations in Christ, but the earth is not new. We won't get a new heaven and a new earth until, Genesis, I mean, until Revelation 21.1. Follow me. We are new creations. We're new, but the earth isn't new. This is very important that you understand this, because if you think the earth is supposed to be happy that you're saved and and, and be a blessing to you just because you're on it, you're wrong. The earth is not new. The earth is cursed. We're not cursed. We live on a cursed planet. So we're blessed fighting against the curse and wickedness and sin. So, so don't, don't, don't think for one moment that you're a welcome sight when you wake up and put your blessed foot on a cursed earth. So understand that. So the planet we live on, again, is not the same planet Adam and Eve lived on before sin and before the curse. Um, let's keep going now. I know I got your attention real good right now. Okay, so our lives now, as a result of sin, as a result of the changes on our planet, the lives of people are much shorter than they were before the flood. People that read the Bible know that. People live hundreds of years longer before the flood than after the flood. So that's another indication that the earth is different. It's different. <laughs> uh, not to mention, we know through Scripture, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, and John 12.31, that this earth now is controlled by Satan, who has been called the God of this world and the prince of this world. Okay, so, so we've got these factors on earth that are pushing against us, hindering us, that we need to understand, which is why our diet has been changed. Let's go further. You, are you, you, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, so in Psalm chapter, or in Psalm 90, the 90th chapter of Psalm, Moses says in verse 10, the length of our days is 70 years or 80, he says, if we have the strength. <laughs> now, Moses says, the average man or human being will live 70 years or 80 if you have strength. Why, why, why would he say if we have strength? We talked about some of this during Covenant Brothers. Amen. So, 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 so Moses says uh, the average lifespan will, of mankind will be 70 or 80 if you have strength. He goes on to say, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away uh, if we have strength. Back in Genesis chapter 6 again, this is what God says as a result of sin. The Lord said in Genesis 6, 3, my spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120. So God gives us 120 years. Moses lived 120. But then Moses says the average man is going to live 70 and 80 if you have strength. You should be pushing for 120. Look at somebody say, you should be pushing for 120. Come on, somebody. You should be pushing for 120. Oh, God, you felt that, didn't you? Oh, God, come on, release that thing in Jesus' name. You should be pushing for one, two, oh. You 60, you young. Quit tripping. 70, you young. Quit tripping. Come on, come on. (laughs) You 80, you got 40 more years to go. Shoot. 
I'm in the Bible. Moses lived to 120. Now, why did Moses say we could live or people would live to 80 if they have strength? Then let's keep going. He uses the word strength here. And the word strength in the Hebrew is geburah. Geburah. And I've got it in our notes here. And the word is associated with warfare. Geburah. It's, it's a strength and vitality that a warrior needs to be successful. So, so Moses is telling us uh, it's just warfare just living on this planet. Just, just looking for your next birthday, there's going to be some challenges. That, that's why you got to eat like a warrior. Touch through, don't touch nobody. Just tell somebody you got to eat like a warrior. You got to eat like an MMA fighter. You got to eat like Floyd Mayweather. You got to eat. Oh, God, here we go. You got to live your diet mentally, spiritually, physically. You have to live like you're a warrior. You got to wake up every day realizing there's a fight just for your existence. And if you're saying the devil really don't like you, and he'll look for any opportunity to take you out. Stress. Tell somebody, shake yourself. Get that stress off of you. Come on, tell somebody, get that to Jesus. All that stress. You got folk, you got kids 12 years old under stress. 12, you're nine years old, stressing out. We need some strength if we're going to continue to grow old and be vital. Not get old, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. Please don't take it that way. Not get old and be worthless. We need to think now about getting older. Tell somebody, you need to think now about getting older. Because you're going to need some strength. Songwriter says, man can expect to live 70 or 80 years if you have strength. If you have geburah. If you are fighting for your purpose and your destiny, if you believe God brought you onto this planet for a reason, you're going to wake up every day fighting to accomplish what God called you and created you to accomplish. You're not going to eat certain things. You're not going to look at certain things. You're not going to read certain things because you need strength. I need strength to move forward. Amen. So he says, Moses says, it takes strength to live to be a, a good old age on this wicked, sinful planet. It's not a guarantee you're going to get old. Tell somebody, no guarantee you're going to get old. <laughs> and, the, and the amazing thing about it is when you're young, you don't even think about getting old, do you? Especially when you're in your 20s, you're Superman, Superwoman, you can do anything. Yeah, see, Jesus Christ came into the world as the son of God. Can't get no higher than that. Yet, while he was on this planet, he had to eat food. How many of y'all know Jesus ate food? Y'all think he didn't eat? He was just holy. He just walked around glowing and stuff. He, no, Jesus ate. He had to eat food. And, and you know, he, he had to eat the right things because he had a human body that he needed God to use. So he had to eat knowing that God's got to use me. I can't eat just any and everything knowing God's going to use me. So Jesus was born the son of God, but he had a body, a human body. Therefore, he had to eat. Jesus had a diet. Write it down. Jesus was born the son of God, but he had to eat, so he had a diet. Jesus knew what he could and couldn't eat in order to accomplish the will of God. All of us need to know that. Everybody can't eat what everybody else eats. Amen. Jesus was born the son of God, but he had a body, so he had to learn. Write it down. So he had to learn. He still had to learn. He had to learn obedience. He, had to, he was the word, but he learned the word. How do you think you're going to be successful as a believer and you don't study the word? Jesus had to eat. Jesus had to learn. And Jesus had to grow. 
Write it down. Jesus had to grow. He wasn't born 33 years old. He was born a baby, and then he had to mature, not only physically, not only spiritually, but mentally. You cannot be grown with an eighth grade mentality. We have to grow. And what you read affects your mental capacity. You have to have a good mental diet. Write it down. You have to read books, articles, publications, take classes that will strengthen your mind so you can do what God called you to do. This is what Jesus had to do. In Luke chapter 1, look at what the Bible says. And the child grew and was strengthened in spirit. And he was in the deserts until the day of his showing unto Israel. That word child there is boy, young boy. Jesus was a young boy, growing but hidden. (laughs) he was hidden because he wasn't ready for what he was going to encounter in Israel we got people today God bless God bless God's people say that with me God bless God's people people. amen God bless God's people we got some people in 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 the body of Christ that got saved and and they now they're ready to go off and be an apostle and, and, and you want a name and a title and you want the mic and you want attention and you need to be hidden until you're ready. Tell somebody, it's good to be hidden until you're ready. Oh, there's a word of wisdom right there for somebody. You don't realize God is hiding you. You ain't ready. You need to be glad. Don't nobody know your name yet. You need to be glad anybody gave you a microphone yet. You ain't ready. You haven't grown yet until. Jesus was hidden. From Israel, he, was, he came to save Israel. But he wasn't ready when he was a boy. <laughs> he had some more growing to do. Tell somebody, you and I, we all have some more growing to do. <laughs> tell somebody, t- tell the Lord, hide me, Jesus, until I'm ready. Hide me, Father, until I'm ready. Hide me, Father, until, don't let me think I'm ready. I'll read it again. The child grew in the desert. Tell somebody, you can grow in the desert. Stop crying. You can grow in the wilderness. You can grow in the desert. You can grow in that dry place. You can grow in that frustrating place. You can grow in that place where don't nobody know you but your family. You can grow in that place. You can grow there if you have the right diet. Write it down. You can grow anywhere if you have the right diet. My God. Isn't that something? And we got, we already blessed all the saints, right? We got wonderful saints. I I, I stopped growing in that church. You can grow in any church. (laughs) Oh, it's tight, but it's so right. If If Jesus grew in the desert, You can grow anywhere. So Jesus as a child was hidden in the desert until he was strong enough to be revealed to Israel. Luke 240. And the child grew and became strong. And he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Now he's grown to 12 years old. This is now when he's gone into the temple (laughs) during Passover. He's no longer a little boy. Now he's a a preteen. But he's still growing. He's still growing. And he's becoming strong. And now he's got some wisdom. In fact, he's got enough wisdom to sit in the temple and discuss the scriptures with full-grown teachers. He's grown enough in the, in the desert 
that now he can come in public and show what he's learned because he's got the right diet. Verse 52, same chapter, Luke chapter 2. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. So now, after he has his encounter with the teachers, he's even stronger. After he's in the church talking about the scriptures, after he goes to church asking questions, after he goes to children's church, after he goes to Sunday school, after he goes to Bible study, he's learning, he's growing, he's asking questions. He's growing strong enough now that he has... <laughs> let, let, me, let me back up. I'm getting too excited. He's, he's 12 years old. He's ready, almost ready for his bar mitzvah where he becomes a full-grown male because he understands the scriptures. He understands his, his role as a man of God in, in Israel, according to the scriptures. But, but he still is not ready for public ministry because according to the old law, the Old Testament law, he couldn't go into public ministry until he was 30. So Jesus has 18 more years to get ready. Tell somebody, you only got so much time to get ready. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You just can't sit on your amazing grace and your dusty crusty and just think God's going to use you and you just pop up one day. You got to use the time you have and get yourself ready for what you believe God has called you for. And you only got so much time to do it. Tell some, look someone in the eyeball and tell them, you better get ready for you know what. I hope you know what. Jesus is 12. He knows he's only got 18 more years before he's 30 and he's thrust into the public. And then after that, he's going to get three more years to teach before he's crucified. He knows all of this. You know he already knows because scripture tells us Jesus knew. So Jesus knew what he should eat. He knew what he should learn. He knew where he was at. He knew what he needed to do because he knew how much time he had to do it. He knew how much time he had to grow to get physically, mentally, and spiritually strong enough to live accurately and successfully on this planet. Jesus knew he had only so much time to get ready for the devils he was going to have to fight. Tell somebody, there's more devils in your future. I know you don't want to hear that, but there's more demons in your future. You got to get ready for them. That's why you're here tonight. Slap somebody high five and say, you show sure right about it, Reverend Bishop. You write about it, Reverend Bishop. That's why I'm here tonight, and I'll be here every Wednesday night until Jesus comes or something changes because I know I'm getting ready for my future. There's some things you're getting me ready for, and I need to, I need to be rooted and grounded in the Word, and I need to continue growing. I need to continue growing. Jesus knew he could talk with grown men about the scriptures, the doctors, the scribes, Pharisees. he could talk to them about the scriptures, but it's another thing to encounter demons. It's one thing to know the scriptures, it's another thing to have people talk about you and you be able to handle it. It's one thing to know the scriptures, it's another thing to deal with death and sickness and disease. It's another thing altogether when it hits your house and you got to deal with it. It's one thing to watch somebody else lay hands, but it's another thing for you to know how to lay hands. It's one thing to know and hear someone else pray in the name of Jesus and see people get saved and delivered. It's a whole nother thing for you to know how to pray in the name of Jesus and cast out devils and decree blessings over the lives of your family and other people. It's a whole nother thing, and you got to get ready for that. Touch three people and say, I got to get ready for that. I got to have, have a steady diet, spiritual diet, to be ready for that. So again, foundational scripture, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb has given you all things. Man would need to get protein, vitamins, minerals, nutrients that he needed now from, from animals. Obviously, there's something that there wasn't enough in 
plants to give man what he needed. So God told man to eat animals now. To get the strength you need, you need to eat some animals. <laughs> now again, I'm not trying to change your diet. I'm just in the Bible. In order to have enough strength that you and I need to succeed, you need to know what you need to eat for your body, for your mind, and for your spirit. Write it down. You need to know what you need to eat. You may not need to read the same books I read. Stop talking little girls, making faces at each other. I see you. You need this. You need to know what you need to eat, what your diet is spiritually, naturally, mentally, all of those things. You need to know that. You need to know. Job 14.1. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Did he tell the truth? In other words, he said life is short and rough. Hallelujah. Life is short and rough. Boy, your little shorty, he don't know. She don't know. They just run around playing, skipping, want some new shoes and a new video game. Hey, you, you, you need to start helping them understand. It ain't gonna always be this easy. You just walk to the refrigerator and waste all that orange juice. <laughs> Life is short and rough. And we know that the Bible says that in the last days, it's going to get even more dangerous. You need to prepare your children and your grandchildren for a dangerous world. Somebody say amen. I I'm not preaching fear. I'm preaching the Bible. Amen. Job says a man that's born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Uh, uh, in Psalm 90, some believe uh, uh, Moses wrote it. Let's go on. We, we started at the 10th verse. Let's go to the 11th verse. The Bible says, who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? Verse 12. So teach us to number our days that me, we may get a heart of wisdom. Teach us to recognize how long we might have on this planet so we use our time wisely, so we can walk circumspectly and make full use of every moment I have because I have a limited amount of time on this planet and I can't spend half of it playing video games. Teach us to number our day. How much time might I have, God, on this planet? How much time might I have? <laughs> what stage of development I, am I in? <laughs> Teach me to measure my life. Oh, this is a hard word. You got to measure, tell somebody, you got to measure your life. We don't, we don't like to do that. That's why we like to be uh, anathematized and, 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 and people do drugs and like to watch TV and veg out because you really don't want to measure yourself. We, we don't want to see. We don't really want to look at our lives and see how successful we are according to God's word. We don't. We just want to go on and live and be as comfortable as possible. But, 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 but we've got to measure our lives. Whatever age you are, Right now, measure yourself. Where am I at, God, according to your timetable? Am I doing what you call me to do? Am I prepared for the next stage, the next level, the next season of my life? Or am I just going along and being pulled along? Because that changes your diet. It changes what you intake, what you take into your body, what you take into your mind, what you take into your spirit. You can't take everything into your spirit. You need to be able to tell some of your wonderful friends that love Jesus, I'm not going to that triple prophetic apostolic underground meeting. That may be good for you. I don't need that right now. That's, what not, that's not helping me where I'm at right now. I'm not against that. But I, that's not what I need. 
And, and even with that, as you invite people to church, you can't say, well, uh, your friend said, well, I invited you. I came to your church. I want you to come to the Wicca meeting of the third witchcraft meeting of the regional Illinois. And I can't, no, I ain't coming to that ever. Just because you came to my church, I'm not obligated to go to that. That ain't of God. Well, I went because they're a friend and they, no, you, some, listen, you need to know what your diet is. That determines where you go and what you ingest. It determines who your friends are at the season you're at. The world is changing. It's not the same world it was 20 years ago. So why should you be the same person? Say la. Job 14, 5. Man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and set limits he cannot exceed. Did you hear that? Did you see that? Some of y'all staring at that. You've never read it. Read it again to yourself. Man's days are predetermined. How long you and I are going to live is predetermined by God. You have decreed the number of our months and you have set limits we cannot exceed. Would that be something? How much time I got? Would that be something if we if if our grandparents through time and God and the word and of course leading of the Holy Ghost can tell us now, now, child, I ain't got but a few more years. So then you, you can prepare for their leaving. Uh, nobody's all tore up and sad and broke up. Folk don't know what to do with, with, with their inheritance because nobody was ready for them to die. How much easier would it be if we knew? Three or four, man, I think grandma is grandpa. Okay, let's get everything together. Let's get, the, how much more stress would we re- alleviate from our lives if we, if we thought like this? Listen to the silence. This is in the Bible, folks. So the real question, my brothers and sisters, is how much time has God given us to complete our earthly assignments? And what diet is necessary for us to be strong enough to successfully complete it? Let let me read it again. The real question is, How much time has God given us to complete our earthly assignments? And what diet is necessary for us to be strong enough to do it successfully? Again, Job 42, 16. After this, Job Job lived 140 years and he saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. This is so good tonight. I love what I'm seeing on your faces, boy. Yeah, this is good. This is good for us. This is good for us. I'm finishing here. Job had three seasons or three stages in his life. If, if you, we did this at Covenant Brothers, and we, we had time to ask how many stages did they see in people's lives. And people had, men, the brothers had several of them. Uh, David had three stages. He was anointed three times. Paul had three stages. Jesus had three. It's so only Moses had three forties. Three stages of his life. The first 40, he thought he was a prince. Sometime the first stage of your life, you don't know who you are. You in the world, you, you, think, you, you think you're a drug dealer. You think you cool. You think you a pimp. Then the second 40, he's in the wilderness finding out who he really is. Sometimes the second stage can be the hard stage. Then the third stage, he's doing what God called him to do. He's a pastor. Job has three stages, three seasons in his life. During the first stage of Job's life, he lived well. 
He loved God. He served God. He loved people. He was a blessing to people. He was 70 years old when God picked a fight between Satan and Job. Job was 70 years old when all that stuff hit him. When God said, oh, yeah, Lucifer, Satan, uh, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, go fight him, but just don't kill him. He going to whoop you. I got his back. The second stage of Job's life was harder than the first stage. Sometimes you can go along in life and things are so wonderful. And you get to a place where you just don't think it could ever go south. And something can hit your life. Rock your life. You love God. You serve God. But this thing hit you and it seemed like it came out of nowhere. And even your friends now don't think you was as saved as you said you were. This is what happened to Job. It happened in his second stage. And, 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 and scholars say, check this out, as long as we read the, the chapters of Job's anguish of him going through, of losing his family and losing everything that was near and dear to him, it only lasted months. It didn't even last a year. You didn't hear what I said. It only lasted, it didn't even last a year, Mother Cooper. But when you read the Bible, it seemed like it lasts a long, because trouble seemed like it lasts much longer than the good times. The pain seems like it lasts longer than the joy. The hard times seem like they last longer than the times that God is blessing you. It's all a matter of perspective. Somebody lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Weeping may endure for a night. A night. But joy comes in the morning. In a matter of hours, things will turn around. In a matter of hours, things are going to turn around. In a very short space of time, things are going to turn around in your life. Oh, God, I wish more people had their hands up and needed God to do something. If you don't need God to do something for you, let him do it through you. Lift your hands and say, God, then use me to turn it around for somebody else. Because trouble don't last always that's why you need we need a steady diet of the word job was 70 mother when things went crazy in his life but it only lasted let's just say 11 months his second stage was short he was blessed for 70 years he had tall respect when he walked in the room. That's Job. If there's a discussion, what's Job think about it? Job had tall honor and respect. He was blessed. He had plenty of money. His children were taken care of. Their future, everything was settled. And all of a sudden, for nine or 11 months, Everything is taken from Job, and people tell him, even his wife says, just curse God and die. You're going to let 11 months make you forget the 70 years that God has been good to you and your children and your family? You mean you're going to let what you've been going through for this short space of time make you forget how good God has been in your life? You're on the wrong diet, my friend. You ain't eating the right thing, my friend. You're not ingesting the right word, my friend. You're not ingesting the right thing, my brother. My sister, you looking at it wrong. So he's 70 and he's blessed. And then now, let's just say it lasts till he's 71. Stage one was for 70 years. Wonderful. Stage two is for 11 months. It's horrible as horrible can be. Full of trials and tribulations. He lost everything. His friends don't, don't believe in him anymore. The community don't want to hear from him. Even his wife don't think much of him. But you know, Job lived to be 210 years old. He lived to be 210 years old. Let's do some math. 70 years were awesome. 
11 months were horrible. I mean, that's only 71 years. He got 140 more years ahead of him. Oh, somebody's feeling the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody knows there's hope. Tell somebody there's always hope in Jesus. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care how bad it's been. I don't care if you lost everything. I don't care what's going on in your life. You just got to wait for that next stage. Tell somebody, wait for that next season. It's coming. Tell somebody, wait on that. Ah, glory to God. Wait on that next season. I feel like running in this place. You need to wait on that next season. Job lived a total of 210 years, according to the Jewish tradition. So that means Job lived... 140 years after his trouble. Job lived, oh, mother, don't do that. He lived 120, 140 more years after his trouble. After the worst season of his life, Caroline. What the Bible says. Job 42, 12. And the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. <laughs> ah, glory to God. The third stage was twice as good as the first stage. Well, what the Bible says. Job 42, 10. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. Hmm. You can't look past that, Pastor Deborah. Thank God for you. The third stage seemingly didn't happen until he got a good diet of forgiveness. I'm helping somebody more than they know. <laughs> Job needed to ingest. He needed time to dine on a good diet of forgiveness. All the folk that said, you ain't going to be nothing. God ain't with you. I don't believe no God is in you. Look at your life. I ain't helping you. You're a dog. You're a cat. You're a Tweety Bird. You're a female cow. God restored the fortunes, plural, of Job when he prayed for his friend. When he decided to forgive. <laughs> when he decided when he remembered who he was before trouble came. When he remembered who he was in God before the trouble came. Tell somebody, you got to remember who you are or who you were before the trouble came. See, trouble changed you. Tribulation changed you. The pain changed you. The disappointment changed you. The hurt changed you. You got to remember who you were before it happened to you. So you can go back to praying for people and walking in love. Pain will change you. Disappointment will change you. Remember when you, there's the old song we used to sing, take me back to the old landmark. Take me back to the place I first believed. Because since I've been believing, some stuff happened to me. I need some musicians. And it changed me. It changed me. And I, this isn't me. The people that really know me know this ain't me. And, and God, I realize now, I haven't been I haven't been walking around like you saved me. I haven't been responding to people like you healed me before. I haven't been 
serving you like you've been good to me. I've been acting like you ain't been good. But I thank God I'm measuring myself. I'm looking at my days. I'm numbering my days. I'm seeing you really have been better to me than things have been bad. You really have, things have really been better longer than they've been bad. Things, they really have been better longer than they've been bad. My brother, my sister, if you measure your life, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had be. Four, after Job got a healthy diet of forgiveness, his last stage of life was his most successful stage of his life. Bow your heads while you're seated, please. Things happen. As you get past 30, you move into your 40s and 50s, you experience deaths and hurts and heartaches, disappointments, betrayals, betrayals. People abandon you that you never thought would leave you. You thought they'd be there for you. They told you they would. They change on you. The economy changes. Family leaves. You move somewhere. And life can be hard on you. But don't let it change you. It just means you need a diet change. You need to change your diet. So you can be what God created you to be and called you to be. It's time for you to prepare for the next stage. Because God has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. God's got more work for you to do. You can't stay stuck in stage one or stage two. So teach us to number our days so we can apply our hearts to wisdom. And last scripture, Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. That was Job's testimony. The glory of the latter house the glory God's got another house for you he's not done with you everyone stand on your feet I love him I love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary. Come on, lift your hands, saints. God's not done with you. God's not done with us. If there's pain in your body, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke it now. May that stage be over where that reoccurring pain has been in your life, in your physical body. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing in your physical body now. That mental pain that you can't get out of your mind, it keeps running over and over and over again like a bad movie. I rebuke that mental pain, that psychological trauma. In the name of Jesus, be free, be delivered from that demonic 
idea that keeps coming back. You are no longer a victim. You are a victor by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke that pain in your mind, in your soul. Be healed in your inner man in the name of Jesus. Take a healthy dose. Get on a healthy diet right now of healing for your soul. That bitterness, I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus that's trying to take root in your spirit and change your very personality and your purpose and your destiny. I rebuke that root of bitterness in the name of Jesus. May it be uprooted by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. You will not get bitter. You will get better. You will forgive like Job did. You will forgive and you will enter into the next stage of victory in your life in the you will forgive your father you'll forgive your mother you'll forgive your loved one you'll forgive and release them in the name of Jesus I'm feeding you a healthy diet of forgiveness and purpose and destiny tonight in the name of Jesus I speak strength gubura Geburah, I speak it in, I speak Geburah, I speak strength into you. You can make it, you are making it, you will make it to this next stage of victory. I speak it, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God tonight that you may be able to stand and withstand against the evil in this day. And having done all to stand, you will stand victorious. David said, I've been young and I've been old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor God's seed begging bread. This season of lack, this season of distress, is only for a minute. <laughs> it's about over. It's about over. It's about over. Come on, you can hang in there. Come on, you can hang in there. Perseverance of the saints. It's about to change for you. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, put your hands together and thank the Lord God Almighty. Come on, thank him real good. Don't play with the thanks now. Now high five somebody before you take your seat. High five somebody and say, I speak strength in your life. Glory to God. Man, I feel victory in the house of God tonight. Victory in the house of God. The house of Joseph. You may be seated. My God.